Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us well-known writer on Latin America, Martha Haneker, to discuss what's going to happen, what's happening in Latin America in general, but particularly in Chile and in Venezuela. Martha, good to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we have in Chile a new situation with Bachelet, but uh, there's not too much optimism from some sectors because uh, she has done in the past a neoliberal uh, policy and uh, now it's true that he has a new correlation of forces in the parliament that would permit her to do different things. But yeah, you know, Martha, before we come to that, yeah. do you think there is a symbolism that Ayanda's daughter who was the president of the Senate, swore her in, therefore it in that, this sense, this term could be different from what was the last term, which was really something which came as a part of a compromise in which she took over power, but agreeing that she wouldn't really rock the boat. I will be very happy that that happens, but uh, you know, uh, I don't know if Isabella Allende represents really a different position than Bachelet. I think that uh, they are both uh, daughters of big men. No? We will see in the practice what would happen. And the problem is that what I know, the last uh, news that I have, is that the cabinet, um, many of the ministers are very unpopular persons. The minister of education is the one that initiated the policy that the youth wants to sure. delete or to, no? Uh, ministers of Defense, Defense and the Secretary also uh, they are related with the past, with things that uh, the left doesn't like. So. I hope that with the pressure, you say, with the movement mobilized, that would be very important to see what happens. And I always say that in Latin America, the most important thing is that the organized people from below are attentive and making pressure to our, to our governments. The student movement from 2011 has been particularly active. Yeah. The left students have really taken up the issue about how the education system is weighed in too much in favor of the rich and how, therefore, their demands regarding education should be met. And this has been a big, big movement. We, yeah. we don't think we've seen this But you know, there was another of... movement in 2006. And it was, uh, well, they promised things and they didn't do anything. So the youth is very skeptical. And it's true that uh, it was uh, very interesting. I was in Chile uh, in 2010 in the final, and I couldn't imagine what would happen four months later in April. No? Chile was completely apathic. The people didn't have hope. And then erupt this movement of students that was not a student movement only, because all the family was involved, because the banner was a banner that, that touched every person in the family, the problem of credit. We are in a society, in Chile especially, with credit, a sociologist says, men tarjeta de crédito, credit card, men credit card, because all the people are indebted, no? and students especially, because the family is indebted, not only the student himself. No? So uh, this is the big problem, no? the new cabinet, the new minister, and this movement, I, I also I knew that uh, they have they began the, the the new government with mobilizations because they don't trust too much what would happen. So hope some hope, but we need to be also skeptical and keep the gaze of the movements on the yeah, government. The, the hope is uh, this student and social movement in general mobilized. I think that this probably would. Uh, permit to do something with a new correlation of forces in the parliament. Do you think that the, some of the student leaders winning elections, very young leaders, would make some difference to their voice being heard more effectively? I hope so. I hope so, but I I don't know if it, is a, it was a good thing to put Camila Vallejo, for example, as deputy, no? because the, the youth is very skeptical of polit political and political. And just he has been a good student leader and then immediately go to the parliament. 
I don't know, really. It may affect her ability to lead further movements. Yeah, I that, think that, that he has lost a... some attractive to the movement. In general, the Jews is very skeptical. But they are doing interesting things um, in the assemblies. No? They work by assemblies, not by, by representatives. No? They, they don't work with the, the bureau of the students, but with the big assemblies. No? And when I ask them, well, but uh, how do you coordinate no? the, the country? No, 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 we, we elect a, a, a representative from the south, the center, etc. But the interesting thing is that they elect this person, but as they are very skeptical of representative persons, they have the experience of deputies that are elected never go to the people, they have invented something that I call the political commissaire of the base, because, you know, the el comisario politico, the political commissaire, was the party controlling the technicians in Russia, for example. Here is the assembly that designed somebody that take care of if the, this uh, representative person of the student is um, marching in the decisions, or said that, applying the decision that has been decided in the collective. No? I think that, that is interesting. How could you invent some solution when you have those problems? No? That's an older problem of how to really, what shall we say, keep the movements on track mm -hmm. and how to keep them aligned with the people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy question for all different kinds of forms, including, as we saw, the assembly itself has a problem for instance, in Occupy Wall Street. Finally, there is, when you have to strike, then yeah. there could be problems about what to do with assemblies. But nevertheless, interesting formations, interesting developments, and Chile looks like to be coming into, again, into some kind of left-wing uh, politics. Let's see how it pans out, even as you say, that we don't know, given Bachelet's record in the first presidency, that she really didn't push a left agenda, but really lived with what was and this, uh, what was uh, Pinochet's legacy. I hope you know Michelle Bachelet is a very charismatic person and a very normal person. I met her by azar in Cuba, and it's really one person of the group, no. So he, she has that possibility, and she has the movement, and she has the correlation of forces of the parliament, then really she has to go ahead, no? And deliver. Yeah. <laughs> now, coming to from Chile, in which we have some possibilities, some very interesting developments taking place, if we come to Venezuela, for the last two months, the international media has been talking about how Maduro is losing popularity, and how those who actually lost the elections, have taken to the streets to try and unseat Maduro. They're not even willing to talk to the, ch the government in Venezuela and are demanding that Maduro must resign. What do you think of this movement that has supposedly sprung up in Venezuela? Well, I will say you that the last poll that has been done two or three years, two or three days ago, um, are different from your information. 50? No, it's not my information. This is what the international media is saying, ah. which I'm deeply skeptical about. And yeah. NewsClick has been reporting the other yeah, side. Yeah, but so probably that's they, not don't, an issue. they don't have then the last uh, no, poll. Have, the international media has that information, will hide it because it wants to propagate a view of yeah. Venezuela. No, 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 but this something. is a recent thing that uh, the recent poll that has uh, the, the results are 54% if. Uh, Maduro was presented now as president, 54% will vote for him. And the other, the, the opposition will be 37. No? And also, who are against violence? We haven't talked about that, but it's very important. In this moment, uh, there is a big uh, confrontation be between the Chavists and the opposed people to, Chavez, to, those to who Maduro. Are, yeah, but those who but, Chavez the, from the, but uh, the problem is that this opposition began to do part of the opposition began to do violent actions, and this has been rejected not only by the Chavez, but also by a part of the opposition. So the, the polls also says that 30% says that it's negative, the violence, and 33% that is very negative. So like 70% of the population is against those violence. So 
I think the art of politics no, is to construct the correlation of forces that permit us to do something. Well, Maduro, I think that is really doing a, a, a very smart uh, policy that is to convoke the sector that are not violent to a di dialogue. And a dialogue that is very different from other dialogues because it's in with the TV. It's not a secret dialogue. So the right that speaks in the TV, well, should be very coherent because the, it's not something that is secret. It's in face of the people. No? And uh, Maduro has had the, the um, how, how will I say, the control of himself to be able to hear the critiques huh? and, and to say, well, you have your your arguments, I have mine. You won't convince me, I won't convince you. But we have perhaps some common things about what to do in Venezuela, because you and I, we are for the def defense of the, of the motherland, you say, no? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then let's work together in what is common to us. No? And I was astonished to read an article of one of the opposition persons that went to the dialogue because not all went, no? But they are, uh, each uh, meeting of the dialogue come more people of the opposition to the dialogue, no? This person was in the, is in the opposition. But he wrote something, two things that I was astonished. Well, first, the violent opposition and the other opposition is not violent eh? and, and criticize the violence. And then also, criticize that something that is very, uh, is, uh, has been a banner of the opposition until now, Cuban presence in, in Venezuela. And, and, and this guy of the opposition says, why do you say so when all the presence of Latin America, m the more reactionary ones, has gone to, s to visit Fidel and has gone to Cuba? Why do you say Cuba? No? So you, you begin to see the effects. but. Some radical left doesn't understand at all this necessity of the dialogue and says, now the petit bourgeoisie is conducted by the bourgeoisie. That is the analysis that they do. Well, you know, the interesting part is, of course, that the United States, I think, has given up the idea that a transition in Venezuela away from Maduro or the Chavez legacy can be had. So I think it seems to be that their strategy of violence on the streets to try and overthrow the, you know, the Maduro government. This is something that is what they have done in Ukraine and unfortunately successfully. Uh, so the belief is that if you use sufficient amount of violence on against the government, that you can try and turn the mandate. Now, of course, it doesn't seem to be working in Venezuela, clearly, as you said, but internationally, like the United States and others are still trying to con continue on that mode. Do you think that this is going to fizzle out or do you think this is going to continue as a long drawn out violence which the opposition to the Chavez, Chavez legacy is going to continue with? Well, the last news that I have is that the violence continue. And what I have heard is that uh, the opposition has not pronounced against. No? So that could be a doubt about the real democratic intentions no? of uh, the opposition that is uh, criticizing the violence. No? They, they, they are not, but they don't publicly go. No? Uh, but what I was saying, uh, I think that the um, economical situation is the key problem now to resolve because the people support Maduro in a little more than a half because they feel that Maduro is the continuation of the economical policy of uh, Chavez. No? And uh, they are the, the people, the more poor people, are, have been very favorized by the economical policy, but especially because they began to be um, considered as subjects, uh, they, they, they feel that the president is a president that is it's pre it's their, their president. president and uh, um, that uh, they have been invited to construct with them the new society. No? And the dignity of the people is something that uh, is very difficult to, 
to delete, no? They feel empowered, you say? Empowered? Empowered. Yeah. And so this support is very important. But the economical situation is really affecting, especially the middle classes, but also the, the poor people. <coughs> so one of the objectives of the dialogue is to do agreements with some sectors of the productive sector of the country, capitalist, that uh, inviting them or be doing agreements to produce what we need in the country and not import. And in that situation, well, Michael uh, Leibovich, uh, that is an economist, could tell you much more what uh, he thinks that it will be the solution of the economical problem. There is an underlying economic pressure on the Venezuelan government, and that would could also tell on the popular mood, which currently is against this kind of violent attempts to overthrow an elected government. It's elected only to three months back, so that's really... That's why absurd. we say that uh, what the opposition is doing is a gift to the government because the economical problem is so complicated, but now violence is the first problem. One of the interesting parts that is also not so known in the international media, and I do hold the international media as an interested party in not making this public, is the fact a number of uh, police and others have died at the hands of the protesters, so-called protesters. Army, and the army. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, the number who've been killed by the protesters exceeds the number of protesters who have died. While the attempt is to put all of the deaths as if it's all being done by the state missionary against the protesters. So these are some of the things which are interesting to watch, how the international media is giving a completely one-sided view of what's happening. Yeah. And, only and all, the, well, and you know, the thing that they have done, the news in the world uh, showing pictures and filmation that were of other countries. Yes. Uh, it's incredible. No, really, that's why we have to do what Korea do with the press, with the media. No? He puts the news and compare. This is what uh, they publish. This is what we have said continually. Each uh, some Saturday, he explained to the people these lies of the press. No? Because, uh, but that's one of the problems that the press, even in Venezuela, is still in the high hands of forces who are not favorable to the well, revolution. Uh, Forget uh, the international uh, press. Part uh, part of the press because we have the national channel that uh, is the orientation of the government. No. Yeah, but apart but, from the national yeah, government uh, media, the other media is still yeah, very yeah, yeah, much in the, the hands of yeah, the, sure. of in, the in right the in uh, and Venezuela, and a section of the right seems to have decided that electoral politics is not something they'll ever succeed in, and therefore whether alternatives exist for them. That's an interesting development. Hopefully it will mean there are further isolation, and we will see how uh, the Maduro government can... And you know, the us. other thing is that Chavez has not died. That's something that perhaps you, have, you don't realize, but I, that in Canada, I am seeing the, the TV every day, the, the opposition channel and the of Venezuela, well, as Chavez has spoken so much of everything, in anything that passed in Venezuela, the voice of Chavez or the video of Chavez is there. So the people are orientated by him in all, in all the situations. And this also is very important for the sp spirit, spirit of mind spirit of, of, the, of the people. Of no? the people. Yeah. Last question. Do you think the coup that took place against Chavez yeah. in 2002 yeah. Are people able to relate that to the current attempts at violent overthrow of the Maduro government? The same forces who tried in 2002 and failed are trying to do the same thing in 2014. Is that a parallel which is being drawn? Probably the same forces are doing so. No? But the problem, the difference is that I think that the army forces now has not those generals that had in that time because the coup d'etat permits to see which, who was who, no? So they detect the people that were against, and uh, the army forces, happily, I think, they are very, very strong related with uh, Maduro's uh, government, no? Yeah. And uh, supporting and, uh, yeah. So the army is no longer going to play that role. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been good to have you with us and hope 
when you come to India again, which I hope you will, we'll see you again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.